and good evening to our global audience who have joined us today in this virtual WIN conference. It is heartwarming to have seen so many of you locked on throughout the day and participating in the different sessions, connecting with our experts and networking with each other on the platform. Another clear sign that our industry is very much ready and prepared to work together to look for solutions to the current challenges that we as an industry are currently facing. What we learned today from our speakers and experts has set the scene for what we as an industry are needing to take action on in the coming months if we are to make a tangible difference to meeting the Paris Agreement targets. We started the day with our opening session where we heard from a panel of global energy industry leaders who discussed what the biggest changes are to transition faster together to a clean, decarbonized energy future. They addressed that the COVID pandemic has brought back trust in experts and science. This might give a push to the expertise needed for the decarbonization of the energy system. Experts, engineers and science is what we need to accelerate the rise of a clean energy system. And governments need to continue to provide packages to stimulate education, innovation and technology development to ensure we create an attractive job market and economic environment with enough smart people to build a new, clean and solid energy system. Diverse teams and open cultures will help to move faster in the transition in order for organizations to find and grow talent with different backgrounds, skills, colors and also create an open culture of collaboration where talent feels free to share opinions and dare to present their ideas. We heard firsthand how by having a diverse and open culture, companies such as GE are improving their profit margins and are creating jobs from a diverse workforce globally. And that many new initiatives to train a diverse workforce are being created by inspiring industry leaders, even in markets where traditionalism still reigns. Next, we moved on to hear about the successful collaboration between 20 different partners who came together under the ACE JIP project. Some of these partners were once competitors. However, through trust and transparency in the sharing of data, they were able to successfully set new industry-wide standards that will benefit us all in the short and long run. Joint industry projects are a perfect platform to drive innovation and agree on industry practices to solve urgent needs and facilitate offshore wind projects in emerging markets with new challenges. A lot can be achieved by working together and finding common ground which benefits the whole industry and accelerates the transition. Trust and certainty were also evoked as enablers to paving the way to safer investments. In two of our sessions on merchant risk, we looked at how PPAs have become the new normal in many countries to get a renewable energy project finance. Therefore, it is a major tool to provide the developer, financier and off-taker the certainty they need to get the project signed. In the PPA markets, there are risk areas that need to be mitigated. Expected production of the projects is for sure one of the most relevant, but time to market of the projects, options on the time of the day in which the projects generate the energy, and certainly the way in which the energy is being purchased 
whether it is physical or synthetic, are areas that need to be settled in the negotiation of the agreement, and that drastically changed the conditions for the project to move ahead in the development phase. When looking into this in a portfolio way, the options scale up and tools for decision making are a must. Merchant risk implies that project developers, investors and owners will have to set up functions and processes for risk management, analysis and decision making to best manage market exposure, long term and short term. Very similar to how traditional merchant generators have dealt with this in competitive power markets. These actors will need to determine positioning strategies to best capitalize on the emerging opportunities when renewable energy markets become increasingly merchant. These positioning strategies imply that actors will be looking for the provision of new services and partnerships from project development, finance and commercial generations to asset operation and maintenance. New services can include long-term and short-term forecasting of generation and market prices, network integration and revenue-based maintenance planning. Aspects such as specialization and scale could become increasingly relevant for sustainable growth. Actors will have an increasing need for industry consolidation and partnership models. Governments and regulators should continue to monitor the implication of introducing merchant risk to the renewable energy markets in order to ensure that renewable energy targets are being met at the lowest societal cost. We need to think holistically in systems, not just in products or isolated wind farms. Wind is now a force on its own, but to make it work, it needs to be integrated into the energy system. There is a need to stop thinking in vertical silent, but to branch out and work and learn from other industries, such as, for instance, maritime and oil and gas. We have the technologies to address grid integration and storage issues, including hydrogen. When it comes to floating wind and advancing faster, we are learning that building collaboration, trust and technologies are the crucial ingredients. We heard that a broad range of stakeholders from different industries, including oil and gas and maritime, will need to collaborate over floating wind development if it is going to succeed. The floating wind industry must utilize and build on knowledge and experience from established bottom fixed wind, but brand new technical challenges will need to be overcome. There are currently many new concepts for floaters at different stages of development. Technological standardization will be very important in moving floating wind towards its aim of commercialization. And finally, we looked at the technologies anticipated to enable continued cost of energy reductions with larger turbine models and larger blades. We're entering a time of transformation and we are merely at the end of the beginning. We hope the next two days will help us to understand this journey and collectively we can work together to take the next steps. Today we covered a lot of ground and have shared invaluable insights that will help us to take our industry forward to the next level. Tomorrow we'll take a closer look at asset optimization and life cycle management over four sessions which will address some of the challenges and solutions our North American colleagues are navigating through including looking at 
what impact the new U.S. administration will have on the industry meeting the Paris Agreement. I truly believe that we can transition faster to a clean energy future. But it needs to be together, and it needs to be now.